Okay, let's rehash. So in lesson 12, we talked about correlations of scatter plots. We said, could it be linear? Which means it's forming this line. Sure. Even though there's points all over the place, we know that there could possibly be a line of best fit that could be linear. But does it have to be? No. There's a lot of situations in the real world where things don't always go straight up. They don't always go straight down. They ebb and flow. They might have some humps to it, okay? The perfect example would be, let's shoot off a bottle rocket. It goes up. It doesn't keep going up. It's got to come back down. So as we shoot it up, its speed increases, but it's decreasing, decreasing, it's decreasing, and then it hits the peak. And then what happens? The speed increases, increases, increases as it falls to the ground. If we shoot off 20 bottle rockets, are they all going to have the same curve? Maybe, maybe not. So that would be something of a quadratic. Well, Mr. H, what do you mean quadratic? So we're still talking about two numerical values, but now we're talking about some different things. So if we have a curve that looks like a U, this is a quadratic function. Quadratic meaning that if we had an equation, instead of just having X, it would be X to the second power, okay? x squared. And we will talk about quadratics, I want to say, in module four or module five. I don't really remember, but that's a big portion of our second semester. So this is a quadratic. Well, what other types are there? Well, in lesson 12, I taught you a little bit, and I didn't teach you. I showed you about an exponential. An exponential means that it will forever and ever and ever, it might hit here and go up, and it's going to go down, 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 but it will never hit zero. It's exponentially growing. In this case, it's exponentially decaying. If I have this one, an upward slope would look like this. Okay? Exponentials don't have the other half of the U. So the difference between the quadratic, an equation that might look like Y equals X squared versus a exponential, an exponential is going to have the x as a variable, or as the next one. So it might say 3x. This one might be, I don't know, 3 to the negative x. Okay? So those are exponentials, where our variable is an exponent. And that makes sense. Exponential, exponent with our variable. So you can have an upward sloping exponential function. You can have a downward sloping exponential function. How are we going to tell in the graphs? Well, listen, you guys are smart cookies. You can do this. So we're going to really consider these four. Let's see if I can make it just a little bit smaller. There we go. Okay, so we can take a look. You should be able to look at all of these and say, okay, do I have some type of, I guess, what's the word I'm looking for? And I've just forgotten my word. Oh, my goodness. Do I have some type of pattern? Okay. In scatter plot one, we can say absolutely. We absolutely have some type of pattern because there's a relationship. There's the word I'm looking for, a relationship. This relationship is most of these points as X increases, Y decreases. Does it appear to be linear? Yeah, for the most part, those points are staying right around that line. This is a linear pattern that has a negative correlation. Okay, number two. Well, we can clearly see that as X increases, Y is decreasing. That's fine. But we can't make a line of it. Well, can I draw some line of best fit that appears? Sure. So what's happening there? Oh. This is an exponential, exponential with a downward trend. It's trending down. Okay. How about scatter plot three? If I take a look at scatter plot three, it is absolutely scattered. There is nothing that I can say about this besides it is absolutely scattered. Scatter plot four. Ooh. Okay, well, this is the easy part. This is going here. 
Oh, but look, 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 look. We've got one more like this. So if I've got this U shape, that is called a quadratic function. Quadratic function. That is muy importante. A linear, an exponential, a quadratic. They all have relationships. Okay? So how do we use these exponentials? How do we use these quadratics? And that's a fair question. So there's our linear. We can use that. I'm going to skip that one. And I want to go to this one. Okay. So a farmer sometimes uses fertilizers to increase crop yield. What that means is they're going to get more crops. But often wonder just how much fertilizer they should use. The data shown in the scatter plot below, blah, 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 blah. Okay. The researchers who conducted this study decided to use a quadratic curve. Well, why? Because, I mean, it's literally following a quadratic. We start here, and it's going down. Is there a peak to my quadratic? Is there a high point before it starts coming down? Well, yeah, something there, right? Around here. I'll say, so my line's a little crooked. I'll say this is about 225. 225, what? Kilograms. Okay, so what it appears, and here's how I'm going to interpret this graph. It appears that 225 kilograms per 10,000 square meters gives me the most yield. This gives me the most yield. Anything lower than that doesn't give me as high of a yield. And anything more than that, it starts to curve back down. So using more fertilizer doesn't actually help. It's actually letting my crops not get as big. It's not giving me as much. So that's why we're using these graphs. Now, can we be more specific? I bet we can. Let's take a look. Okay. So they've given us this equation. This is the equation for that scatter plot. And you're going to learn about how to make these equations in a little bit. Y equals 4 and 7 tenths plus 5 hundredths X minus 1, 2, 3, 1, X squared. Okay. They want us to fill in this chart. Okay. So if I substitute 0 in for my X, that leaves me with 4 and 7 tenths. If I substitute 100 in for my x, that should leave me with 8 and 7 tenths. And you might say, Mr. H, how do I substitute it in? Literally plug it into your calculator and do exactly what it says. If you have trouble with that, let me know and I'll gladly help you. But most of you don't have the fancy dance, the fancy dancy is what I was going to say, the fancy super duper calculators. And I don't even know where mine is. There it is. Then the next one, these two give me 10 and 7 tenths. Huh. That's weird. And then when I substitute in 400, it gives me 8 and 7 tenths. So does that make sense? Let's go back real quick to my graph. Does it make sense that at some point, this side and this side are the same? But then as you get more fertilizer, it goes down. Yeah, because remember, there's a peak up here. Quadratics either have a peak or a valley. This peak is the maximum number of fertilizer kilograms that we want to use. But you need to know how to substitute it in. So based on the quadratic, what would you recommend a farmer use? About 225 kilograms, because that's the peak of that quadratic. Understanding how to work with these is important. Okay, so let's go to the lesson summary real quick. Maybe. There it is. So here's what you need to know from 12 and 13. A scatter plot can be, to, can be used to find whether there is a relationship. It could be linear, but it doesn't have to be. Linear, quadratic, exponential, those are all types of functions that you will absolutely see in the real world. COVID is an exponential function. We don't know what the max number of cases could be. Linear, how much I get paid each week. Quadratic, again, that bottle rocket going around. Models can be used to answer questions about how two variables are related. We're going to really dive into that. 
So we've done lesson 12 with scatter plots. We've done lesson 13 with scatter plots. Let's keep using scatter plots, folks. Maybe. Bye.